Welcome to worship. We have a lot going on today. Today we celebrate Epiphany. We, sh we celebrate the Magi coming to the Savior. And if you get to see our major manger scene, you'll see that the Magi have shown up. If you go back and look at previous worship, you'll notice that the Magi are not in the manger scene. So today we celebrate them arriving. We're also, being the first Sunday of the month, and the first Sunday of the year, we're going to join at the Lord's table and share in Holy Communion. So if you forgot, go and get your communion elements, get your bread and get your juice, and we'll celebrate Holy Communion today. Let's open up with prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, who breaks through the darkness of doubt and despair, be with us this day as we hear the visit of the wise ones who risk everything to follow a star. Let us open our hearts and be willing to risk receiving the gift of gracious love that you have offered to us in the form of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you would join with us as we sing our first hymn, the first Noel, verses 1, 2, 3, and 5.
Good morning. Let us join together in the call to worship. Darkness is not limited to night skies. Darkness invades our spirits and our souls. In darkness of doubt and despair we have lived until we witness the birth of the Savior. Now the light has truly come to us. Darkness has been banished away. Arise, shine, for the light of God's love has come, and we shall be led to that light in joy and celebration. Amen. Let us pray. Patient Lord, wait for us a while as we get nostalgic over the manger scene. Our hearts are warm by the witness of the shepherds and the journey of the Magi. We want to stay right at that time and feel that glow of that love. but you call us to go forth from the manger. You pour your transforming love into our lives and we are challenged to bring back to all those places the glad news of hope and salvation. Remind us again of the opportunities we are given to celebrate your love and power. Help us find joy in serving others. Lord, we lift up our burdens and our joys. We lift up the people who are hurting, that are dear to us. We lift them up before the throne of grace and we ask for healing mercies. Help us to remember that the love poured out in the light of the Nativity Star is given to us to, to, today as well. Give us grace and peace to reach out to all those in need. Loving Father, we pause for a moment to, to lift up all those who are in need of your love. Father, pour out your loving mercies upon us. Pour out your healing grace upon this world. Lord, we ask for healing for the virus. We ask for healing for this world. Lord, we come together wherever we are. as one body, as the body of the church. And as we lift up our praise and our, our burdens and our hurts to you, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us join together in the reading of our scripture this morning, which we read from the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 1 through 12. I'm sorry, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem and Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we remember the wise men today. We remember these priests who specialized in interpreting stars. And in Daniel's time, the Magi were prominent in Babylon. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 2, it says, So the king summoned the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the astrologers to tell him about his dream. We look at the magicians and the astrologers, the sorcerers, the soothsayers. They're all mentioned in the second chapter of Daniel. And some writers think that there were five distinct classes of magi. But they have tr trouble telling them apart from each other. And in Persia, they became a very powerful body. And then they were, they were divided into three classes. There were the Herbeds, and they, they were disciples. There were the Mobeds, and they were the masters. There were the uh, Dester Mobeds, and these were the perfect masters. Later, the term Magi became kind of an overall title for all of them. And as the Magi were men of learning devoting special attention to astrology and the natural sciences. And the Magi who came to visit the Savior were no doubt one of the higher classes of Magi. Now there's a couple falsities that we grow up believing. Uh, one, that the idea that there were three kings, we're not really sure how many kings there were. It's impossible to prove, but we we, some people believe that we say that because there were three distinct gifts. It's also noteworthy that in Matthew 2.11 it says, On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they kneeled down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So it says here, the wise men entered the house, which leads some 
credence to the fact that Jesus was probably a toddler by the time the wise men came to see him. There's a story about a little boy who was no more than seven years old. And it was time for church and he wanted to take his teddy bear, or whom he had always called Frank. And his parents protested, but he insisted that he take Frank today. And they finally let him have his way. When the offering plate was passed, he put the teddy bear in the plate along with a few coins. And later when asked about it, he, he said simply, well, the Bible says the wise men brought Jesus gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I didn't have any gold. I don't even know what myrrh is. So I just gave him Frank and some cents. Well, the Magi were skilled astrologers. And they earnestly were seeking this newborn king. And where they came from is disputed. And various writers suggest they were from all over the place, from Babylon, that they maybe were Persians, that um, Arabians, uh, maybe from Burma. Matthew just says they were from the east. That's pretty generic. That's a pretty big area from the east. The appearance of the new star would have been worthy for pursuit. And it was widely held that new stars appear when great rulers are born. And this rumor circulated back when Alexander the Great was born. And the fact that Herod felt threatened when he heard about the star indicates that some of the Jews may have held this belief as well. The expensive gifts that the wise men offered the child were appropriate for royalty. Imagine the shock of this young couple who had offered the poor person's offering of doves instead of a lamb when they took Jesus to the temple. Some speculate that this wise man's generosity, these generous gifts made it possible financially for Joseph and Mary and Jesus to move to Egypt before Herod slaughtered the innocent children in an attempt to eliminate any possible rival to his throne. So these wise men from the east were scientists and practiced other religions, and God used their faith and knowledge to bring them to Jesus, to the Christ. And more ironic, God used science, scientists who practiced other religions to let, the, let King Herod and his chief priests and scribes of the people let them in on the news that their Messiah had been born. God seems to do whatever it takes to reach out and to embrace all people. God announces the birth of the Messiah to shepherds through angels on Christmas, to magi, via a star on Epiphany, and to political and religious authorities of God's own people in through visitors from the East. From a major where a child wrapped, lies wrapped in swaddling clothes, God reach, God's embrace, and Jesus Christ gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Jesus eats with outcasts and sinners. He touches people who are sick, who live with disabilities. He even calls the dead back to life. Ultimately, Jesus draws all people to himself as he is lifted up on the cross. In Jesus Christ, no one is beyond God's embrace. You see it throughout the whole Bible that God not only uses people of faith, but he also uses sinners and people who openly defy him. Have you ever thought of the things that went through the wise men's heads, things they didn't know? And like Abraham, they set out on a journey, not knowing where it would take them. In Hebrews 11.8, by faith Abraham 
when called to go to the place where he later received his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. They didn't know how long of a trip they were going to take when they decided to follow this star that appeared in the east. They didn't know how they would be received in these foreign lands. They didn't know what kind of king it would be. What would he look like? Nor did they ever really know if they were going to return home. Yet, they, like Abraham, chose to make that journey. A journey that would bring them to this small town in Israel to pay homage to this adoring Christ child. What if the wise men had decided just to stay home? We listen to stories about this cross-country travel every single year. And then we look in the manger scene and we expect to see the Magi there kneeling at the baby Jesus. The manger scene would seem empty without them. as if almost like we'd have a picture in our house that was missing our closest relatives. But what if they never arrived? Or what if they consider taking a trip into this unknown time and decided, hey, this is too risky. It's too complicated. What if the trip seemed just too overwhelming and too much trouble? If the wise men had stayed home all those years ago, they would have missed the Christ child. If they had not dared to venture out into the unknown, they wouldn't have encountered God in this whole new way. There was a miracle waiting to be discovered. But they wouldn't have experienced it if they would have played it safe. If they went on a different route. Or what if the wise men never looked up? What would have happened if they hadn't taken the time to scan the skies and gaze up at heaven? What if they were so busy in their lives, so consumed with their day-to-day -day activities, or worried about their pressing obligations or scholarly responsibilities, that they never even noticed that shining invitation beckoning them to break out of their routine? Following the light of God is a similar journey that requires faith. We often feel we don't know where our journey will lead. And we certainly never know what we're going to find along that way. We do, however, know that God goes before us and with us on that journey. And that journey is not in vain. God will use us and bring us to the place to adore him and to share him with others. Think how much faith that these magi who didn't even know what to expect on this journey, that their step in faith, not even part of the Jewish religion, and they went on this long journey. How hard is that for them to do? How much easier is it for us to tell someone about Christ? When you get those opportunities and you're not sure what to do, remember those magis that took that, that first step into that incredible journey. Don't be afraid to take that step. Take the step into a journey and tell someone about God and what God's done for you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, thank you for the gift of the beautiful child that sparked the joy in the Magi's hearts so long ago. Just as you, Lord, had planned that use of the gifts of the Magi, you also have a plan to use our gifts to make disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you to help us to keep our hearts open that we will adore and pay homage to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
we come to the Lord's table today. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which has been given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you please join us on our ending hymn, We Three Kings.
Please bow your head for the blessing. The light of the star, the light of God's love, shines before you. Go in peace. Go in joy. Go in love to meet God's people in the world and greet them with the good news of salvation. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a safe and blessed week. Thank you.